Welcome to Kendra's Card Challenge number nine video hop from the new quarterly card making challenge by Kendra. Kendra will be giving away tons of prizes from some very generous sponsors. So make sure you comment, like, and subscribe along the way at each of the 15 different card makers part of Kendra's design team. For a chance to win more prizes, you also need to upload a photo of all your cards onto Kendra's Facebook page as well. You can see the full list of all the videos part of the video hop and more details around the giveaway and the card making challenge in my description box below and also using the hashtag on the screen. Hi everyone, it's Steph here from Chaos in the Craft Room in Melbourne, Australia and I'm very excited to share with you today card sketch number 14. If you like this video, I would absolutely love your support to hit the like and subscribe button. So the paper that I've decided to use for this card challenge is Hopscotch uh, from Kayser Craft, which is a common brand here in Australia. It has these fun little uh, images at the back that we can use as well, which makes it super easy for making cards quickly. It is only single-sided, uh, so for Kendra's card challenge, you can use double-sided paper, which does make it a little bit easier, as you can flip them over and use both sides, but that's fine. And I'm just going to trim a quarter of an inch off each side, because the paper pack is six and a half inches uh, square. And so we don't need that half an inch, but uh, you'll also see that I can make a really fun card with those little strips that I cut off the edge for that as well. And these are the papers that I've selected to use for Kendra's card challenge out of that paper pack. It does make it easy in one sense that the back is white as I can write the numbers on the back of the paper to indicate what card sketch they match to. So for cutting the paper, Kendra's got a good detailed video on how to do that, but I'll just show you for paper F that we're using for card sketch 14, is that this is the order of the cuts that I've done them in. The only thing I really wanted to point out was this last cut on the angle. Now, and that's because when, this is the second time I've cut out this piece of paper, so lucky I had a spare piece. But as you can see here, it's cut in the right direction. But when I first went to cut out this paper pack, I marked everything on the back of the bit of paper. So you can see here, this is my previous uh, cut. It looks exactly the same, the one on the left and the right. One I've marked on the front where the pattern is and one I've marked on the back where it was white. However, when you flip this one over, it doesn't quite match uh, the, the right direction. It's the opposite, um, obviously, but I just didn't think that through when I was making my first cut. So just a reminder to when you are cutting the diagonal to make sure you've got the patterned paper facing upwards that you want to use on your card sketch. For all the other cuts, it really doesn't matter. Or if you do accidentally cut it the wrong way, it doesn't make a big deal. You can just uh, use a different direction on your card as well, and that won't matter. Okay, so let's get started with sketch 14. So we've got our main piece of pattern paper there from paper F that's already cut out. And these are the other pieces you need to have cut out ready to assemble the card sketch together. Now it is quite an easy sketch and what I love is sketch number 14 and 15 are sort of the opposites of each other. So the leftover strip that you've cut from the diagonal pieces, the opposite pieces will be used in card sketch number 15. So you can do two things here. For me, I've decided to cut the extra bit of paper that I'm showing you here. This one I've cut just a little bit shorter so we can see a strip of that red background between the pieces of cardstock. However, what you could also do is cut a strip of paper uh, that you can then put on that diagonal if there is no gap between those two pieces of pattern paper. 
or you could use a bit of ribbon. And if you are going to use a bit of ribbon, I recommend to stick that down now before we put it onto the final backing piece of paper. So you can tuck those ribbon edges um, onto the back and make it a really nice, neat looking finish to the edges. Now I'm not so good at using ribbon <laughs> and I'm very terrible at tying bows with ribbon. Um, I've even tried the, the fork technique um, or any possible technique you can imagine. I have Googled it. So <laughs> if you have a really good trick of how to tie a bow that you would recommend, let me know in the comments box below. Instead, I'll be using a little gift tag and that's perfectly fine as well. Now I have the matching hopscotch sticker set as well that matches and I just got this bird and musical note from it. Absolutely love it. It's so cute. Um, I love this little singing bird and there's that extra uh, tag that I've stuck on with hello. I just think it's such a lovely general sentiment that I can then use the card for anything and I can always stamp a different sentiment onto the card at a later point as well if I wanted to. And you can see there, there are the opposite cuts ready for card sketch number 15. So make sure you go and watch that next video hop as well and see what our next card maker has made. I hope you've enjoyed this video hop and I can't wait to see what you create when you participate in the card challenge.